economy you can understand the concept once you try it, once you read the term itself you will get some idea what is this uh, mechanics all about see the term is market stabilization stabilization scheme market stabilization scheme or mss now what is the problem i mean so what is the scheme just give a make a guess what is the scheme is all about to make market stable now this topic is under this topic is under money and banking so what might have happened to the market some instability might have happened instability due to instability due to excess liquidity this is very important this scheme will be used by rbi when the market become unstable or instable due to excess liquidity so <coughs> be very clear with the concept market stabilization scheme is basically performed by reserve bank of india to absorb excess liquidity to absorb excess liquidity to absorb excess liquidity now try to understand that this was first used way back in 2004 this was first used way back in 2004 when when there were excess liquidity due to inflow of foreign currency that time in 2004 when mss was used first time for the first time by the reserve bank of india that time the excess liquidity was mainly due to inflow of high foreign forex reserve like foreign currency now how foreign currency results in high uh, liquidity we are talking about when we talk about liquidity it is in indian rupee only now try to understand see again regarding the forex reserve regarding the forex market will be patient we'll be discussing under balance of after balance of payment when we discuss foreign exchange reserve when we discuss exchange rate regime we'll discuss that but just have an idea how foreign inflow excess foreign inflow results in excess liquidity now try to understand when a foreigner brings forex or foreign currency he will go to foreign exchange market he will go to foreign exchange market what he will do in the foreign exchange market he will sell dollars he will sell dollars and buy indian rupee now when there is when there is greater demand for indian rupee when the great when there will be greater demand for indian rupee when there is more dollars when when more dollars are selling in the foreign exchange market more dollars are selling in the foreign exchange market in return for indian rupee why the foreigners are want indian rupee because if they want to invest in india they want indian rupee so first they have to convert the foreign currency into indian rupee so what is happening when there is huge forex inflow when there is huge forex inflow forex means foreign currency when there is huge forex inflow what will happen it will have a pressure on indian rupee the value of rupee will appreciate don't ask anything how it will happen we will discuss just have an idea there will be pressure on on the value of rupee pressure on the rupee means there is demand demand for indian rupee when there is demand for indian rupee as per the market condition the value of indian rupee will increase so in order to avoid that indian uh, rbi want rbi want this uh, the rupee value to be stable so in order to avoid that in order to avoid that rbi will make a counter strike rbi will do a counter strike in the sense in the sense when see this is sufficient liquidity is there now there is a the dollar is been taken by 
these people this dollar by selling dollar this rupee is been taken by the foreigner again which will be invested in Indian market but it is having an impact on Indian rupee so what the RBI will do RBI will start selling RBI will start selling Indian rupee to match to match the dollar demand so what will happen what will happen the Indian rupee value will get stabilized see the demand and supply have become matched how much dollar has been sold that much Indian rupee has been sold by <laughs> see it's like this very uh, uh, just go to uh, uh, a market fish market okay if you say dollar <laughs> and Indian rupee you will not understand I will explain with fish <laughs> because or you go to any vegetable market or mango market means you go to a rala market okay now if you uh, normally at uh, this uh, fisherman who sell this fish he always bring five big fish <laughs> and he always have five regular customer and uh, by the time he comes by 9 and 11 o'clock his he will sell all this five fish and get a fixed he knows that it's a common customer and he sells 100 rupees for each fish get 500 and get the profit and go back home so the price is stable right 100 rupees for each fish do you have any doubt no <laughs> Now imagine, suppose a foreigner have come, <laughs> a foreigner have come and he has bought all the five fish and gone. Then when these uh, people have come, uh, they are not having fish. Now what this uh, fisherman will say, he, that foreigner have come, then see when the foreigner will come, this person may say that, hey, yeah, see this has been reserved for my uh, regular customer then foreign will say I want this and then, then uh, I am ready to pay 550 rupees then what this fellow will do uh, 50 rupees profit he will sell that for 550 so see the how the price is increasing then the common customer will come then the customer will say Are, uh, what you have done I if you might have asked me I should have paid 110 rupees you get in the point demand is there supply so demand is driving demand is driving this this fish price now if this is happening now a third fellow is suing, seeing this ah this fellow is um, changing the market system what uh, he will do he will come with another five fish and sit near to him you get the point another person will come normally five fish is there and the person will come and he will come with five fish what will happen what will happen this fellow how to come back and sell it at 100 rupees otherwise otherwise this fellow will come the all existing customer already existing customer is unhappy why he has sold to a worthen foreigner <laughs> so you get the logic so what has happened what has happened here what was the demand yes counter it with with that so a new supply have added a new supply added now the problem is after three days foreigner have gone you are getting the point see for temporary temporary thing the price have been stable in the next day so in the second man is the RBI RBI came and in introduced new currency and balanced the price of value of Indian rupee the issue here is the issue here is now what will happen what will happen now already extra five fish have come this what will be done with this it has to be done so what the RBI have injected here now what now think this foreigner the common the the fish seller RBI the second person now what this RBI have done RBI have stabilized the value of Indian rupee but it has created another problem what it has injected new liquidity to purchase this dollar yes or no yes or no from RBI's pocket it see when RBI releases money from his pocket it is what it is injecting liquidity RBI is not taking from anyone RBI is taking money from its reserve to what for what purpose it has taken reserve to to stabilize rupee so to stabilize rupee what in the, what happened after that it has released more rupee so it want to absorb that it want to absorb RBI want to absorb that liquidity 
which it injected to stabilize forex currency. Now, how RBI will do that? RBI have to issue some mechanism. So, the common mechanism can't be used. Common mechanisms like open market operation because this is done for a different purpose. So, RBI has helped the government to stabilize rupee. So, what the RBI will do? RBI have asked, RBI have asked the government to issue special bond. RBI have asked government to issue special bond for what? To absorb, to absorb this liquidity and thereby market will get stabilized. So, MSS bond are issued by RBI for government and there is a difference here. Two important points are there. The money which, now the money will be going to government, that money will be kept not with the government, it will be kept with RBI only. So, that, that money which the government have taken or issued under MSS bond, it is not for government expenditure. Unlike government security, that fund, see government security, government can use it for government expenditure, but MSS fund which it has taken can't be used for any other purpose, it should be kept with RBI or it should be kept ideal and there is a liability also for government, liability is, liability is interest have to be paid, unlike CRR, unlike CRR for MSS, the bank or the, the, the amount which it get uh, absorbed, how to pay, <coughs> the government have to pay interest for it. So, MSS have after a long time, so normally MSS, normally MSS bond is being issued by RBI to absorb excess liquidity mainly due to foreign inflows. This was, if you read any textbook, this is the definition you will see. Now, after demonetization, the demonetization have resulted in excess liquidity. See, normally RBI will never allow excess liquidity to happen normally, other than outside. But this demonetization resulted in this demonetization resulted in unexpected because it was unplanned. This demonetization was and the, see the intention was good, but it was very clear. It was unplanned. That's why still now we are getting uh, that impact. I don't know how many months it will take when we will be having proper currency in our cash hand. Anyway, leave that. So, because of this demonetization exercise, you know that all the banks were swelled with what? Cash deposit. So, the banks is having lot of deposits. Reverse repo window uh, have, is, was getting exhausted. RBI then suddenly introduced incremental CRR to solve all the problems because there is no liability under incremental CRR. Then one requested, do not do this. At least, at least we are already under pressure, are already under loss. At least issue MSS bond. Then RBI said, it is not under my control. Now, again in relation to this, this updation you have to make. In every budget, the government allocate certain fund for MSS activity. In every budget, the government allocate MSS allocation. For this year, it is mentioned in the material, for this year, that allocation was 30,000 crore. But demonetization, how much fund have come? It is in lakh crore. So, very recently, that have been changed, the government have changed from this limit, that you have to update it. Please update your study material, in the study material, it is saying 30,000 crore. But very recently, it has been changed to 6 lakh crore. So, read that article study material which I have WhatsApp you, read it and update this MSS material. Now, what the government have done? Finally, the, uh, the request of the banks were taken into consideration by the government. Government have increased the MSS limit to 20 times the record, 20 times that is 30,000 into 20 is 6 lakh crore. So, that so that once the 6 lakh crore uh, MS with this MSS bond, this extra liquidity can be absorbed and the bank is also happy, they will get some return and RB is also happy that it can withdraw incremental CRR. Once the bank uh, government approved this MSS 
bond limit to 6 lakh RBI in its review policy have withdrawn uh, incremental CRR from December 10th. So, this is the issue all about. So, MSS is very very important now <coughs> learn MSS from this point of view MSS is important and why uh, MSS have on what context MSS will be used to absorb excess revenue not only for due to foreign inflow it can happen it can happen like this exercise demonetization exercise what has happened recently so please go through it I have not mentioned cash management bill which I will discuss tomorrow please bring please bring all the study material which are given today tomorrow I think tomorrow also we have to continue with money and banking all are exhausted I am also exhausted <laughs> please go and read it and come so we will finish tomorrow money and banking thank you